welcome, 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 all you lovers of horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. It's time yet again for another thrilling, exciting installment of, you guessed it, Fear and Fascination, Horror, Sci-Fi, and Fantasy Unleashed. Coming at you live every Saturday night, 4 p.m. Pacific Time, that's 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Get Real Global TV and Get Real Global Radio KGRL. You can watch us live on our YouTube channel, Get Real Global TV. We're also Get Real Global TV on Twitch and TikTok. And you can check out our Linktree page to see all of our social media and website links. And you just type in at Jennifer DeVoe Muse. Uh, you can check out our radio station, K Get Real Global Radio KGRL on Spreaker. And we're also syndicated on the following. iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube Music, TuneIn, Amazon Music, Audible, Apple Podcasts. You're also on Spotify Podcasts and YouTube Music pretty much everywhere uh, that you can watch or listen to podcasts. And we're distributed by Sony Music Entertainment. Sony Music Publishing, The Orchard by Sony, and 5050 Global Music Incorporated. I'm your host with the most, is Jennifer DeVoe Muse. Hello to everyone watching or listening to this broadcast around the world. Let's say hello to my one of my lovely co-hosts, Samantha Bailey. Happy Woo! Saturday, everybody. Happy Saturday. And if you didn't realize it yesterday, it was Friday the 13th, so... Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I wanted to do a Jason Voorhees marathon, but I had to resist the urge and, uh, you know, <laughs> continue on watching uh, House of the Dragon, which is uh, the prequel to Game of Thrones. <laughs> For all you J uh, George R. R. Martin fans... Um, anyway, so, uh, unfortunately, the sultry songstress, Amy Bowman, cannot be with us this evening because she is not feeling well. She's been really sick, so, uh, and unfortunately, Shyler Staver, same thing, he's been yakking all day, so I am sorry to the Mac Daddy of Metal and the sultry songstress that you are ill. Uh, they don't live that far away from each other, so it doesn't really surprise me that there's some kind of a thing going on. A big old bug in SoCal or Middle Cal ish. Yeah. No Cal. Yeah. No, and then they're like mid, they're a little below like uh, San Francisco. Right. So, so I guess technically Southern California. Yeah. They're about four hours north of Los Angeles. Right. Yeah. So how's your day going? My day, amazing. Make that money. is wonderful. And who doesn't like to make some money? <laughs> very true, very true. Um, I'm very excited for today's guest here on Fear and Fascination, Horror, Sci-Fi, and Fantasy Unleashed. And um, I'm very excited for this one. It's author Stephen Joseph. And he is the award-winning uh, book uh, author of the, uh, what is it, the is Snoodles series. It's Snoodles in Space. Uh, it's a book uh, series that is, 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 is captivating re readers of all ages with humor, adventure, and valuable life lessons. Uh, so the book, his latest book, is called Snoodles in Space, Episode 2, The Zoodles Strike Back. And that's the third installment and in the beloved Snoodle series. So um, very excited to talk to him about this. And uh, he said, you know, they say that it appeals uh, with humor and detailed illustrations appealing to ages five to 99. So pretty excited about that one. And uh, the book is ultimately about love and uh, interpl interplanetary marriage in it. And, uh, so we're gonna, it's going to be fun. Like I'm excited because this is like a sci-fi type of a thing. So I'm very excited for this one. Uh, but let's bring on our featured guest today. None other than author Stephen Joseph. How Hello. are you? 
Welcome to the party, sir. The party? <laughs> this is the party. Oh boy, it's the exciting. party. <laughs> So we were just telling our uh, viewers a little bit about what, you know, what your newest project is, but uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the Snoodle series? Oh, like yeah. what does this entail? I, if I wrote the books. I know no anything about the Snoodle series. <laughs> I came to the right person. So, so uh, I started out with Snoodles, Cadoodles, Poodles, and lots and lots of noodles. Oh. Uh, starts the, the first book actually uh, introduces us to the snoodle and you might say, what's a snoodle? The right. snoodle, well, you know, before the snoodle, everybody was driving around in kraut mobiles, which ran on sauerkraut. And uh, not, nothing wrong with sauerkraut. People like sauerkraut. It's good yeah. on a hot dog. But, you know, if you everyone's driving around in these kraut mobiles, you get, everyone starts smelling like sauerkraut and got pretty cranky. So Herbie Snoodleman invented the snoodle which runs on noodles. You can fill up, you go to ramen oleum, fill up your snoodle with noodles and off you go. Not only that, when you get home, you press a button, you get a whole bowl of noodles for dinner. What could yeah. be better than that? So, yeah. so the, um, this, the second story was with snoodles in space, a snoodle, the zoodle, kadoodles, and lots of, and one happy schmoodle. And um, that introduced us to this, the zoodles. And the Zoodle, um, the Zoodle Cadoodles, they're from the planet Zoodle. And uh, they were run by Cloodle the Grand Rudle, but he had a problem. He had genius brain, which you might say, oh, genius brain, that's a good thing. But it's like athlete's foot. It's like a function <laughs> of the brain. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not very good. And, oh. uh, and the, also the problem on, on Zoodle uh, they used to have the most brilliant brain surgeons in the entire galaxy. And what happened, these, these brain surgeons would always poo-poo everybody. Oh, you're just a podcast host. It's not brain surgery. And like, you know, it's just, or, and then they also had a problem with rocket scientists as right. well. Oh, it's not rocket science. So people got intimidated. All the Zoodles got intimidated. And after hundreds and hundreds of years, there was no brain surgeons left. Oh. So... So the Zoodles had a problem. Their grand Rudel, Cloodle, the grand Rudel, had genius brain. So they had to find like a brain surgeon to fix the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, and we, we they uh, had it was Norman Noodle and Sally Strudel. Uh They were just bakers, but they always tell their kids, you know, like you know, he didn't make it bad. Hey, it's not brain surgery. It's not rocket science. And it was Bri Brianna Brainy Brutal and Ricky Rockadoodle. Uh, uh, who happened to be great brain surgeon and a rocket scientist. So, so oh, the wow. parents were abducted by the Zoodles, and they placed these vacuum doodles over the planet Earth to, to vacuum up all the noodles from Earth and leave us completely noodleless. Which I don't know if you ever been noodleless before. It's 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 a it, terrible. It, it, it would suck. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not good. So, um, so they they actually saved the planet. And mm. that leads to the third story where the Zoodles strike back. And, and oh. they weren't happy about how things turned out in the second book. Mm. And um, this is actually a, a takeoff of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, and, cool. Uh, so what, what in this, like, if you remember my favorite book, my favorite movie was the original Gene Wilder one. And I happened to be watching that movie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I know that, you know, we all know about like Charlie's a good kid. And oh, mm -hmm. wow. You know, like he gets the chocolate factory at the end. But these other kids, it didn't turn out too well for them. Mm -hmm. and, and then the other thing about that, I noticed, huh, there was a media frenzy uh, surrounding the chocolate factory. All the TV crews, the paparazzis, the radio stations, the newspaper people, everybody was there. And I'm, I was guessing they probably did not get the best press in the world. You know, mm. so, um, so what happens, I said, well, let me like take those kids and, and make them heroes. Uh, oh. and I love the, the concept of redemption um, right. in the first, second and third book. So, so um, we have Frumpy Frumpy Frudel 
and Whippy Whiny Woodle. Those are the two kids of Grumpy Grimy Grudelman who invented the Grudel, which runs on gruel and it's even stinkier than the Crapmobile. But oh. yeah, yeah. But Whippy Whiny Woodle, they go to the chocolate factory and he has a, 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 a fitzy witsy pop a doodle. So first he fits and then he wits and then he popped and Whippy Whiny Woodle had a swizzly twizzly slime a doodle and then she swizzled and twizzled and she turned into a bucket of slime. Oh. You know, that was, but uh, not good. The Slimer, which was good, you know. So, so, um, so, they they really the newspapers rolled over it. It was just and kids made fun of them, and mm -hmm. it wasn't very good. But they overheard a, overheard a plot to poison the water supply and turn everybody into willy nilly noodles and dilly dally doodles complete mm. nincompoopa doodles if you if you ask me mm. so they have to decide whether did we save the planet from everybody becoming nincompoopa doodles or should we um uh just like hey you know like uh let everybody become dummies uh they mm. make the right decisions so it, it turns out okay okay well that's yeah. good yes it kind of reminds me almost of the world of like Dr. Seuss with the rhyming and the, I like, I kind of like that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like, I would say it's Dr. Seuss. Somebody, one reviewer says Dr. Seuss, Star Wars and uh, Willy Wonka put in a blender and like mix. Oh, but those are three amazing combinations, you know? Well, yeah. That's great. It's fun. It's fun. It's just like uh, uh, I'm an attorney by day. I didn't plan on this, and oh, that's just, awesome. It just uh, it just happened. That's really great. So you're like this, you know, serious attorney by day, and you're you know you're fighting in the legal system and doing all this stuff for people, and then by night and on the weekends, you're an author. Yeah, of, of you know, what I mean? but no, that's amazing that you have that outlet. You know, it kind of lets you be that have that fun side still. That you know, like I'm like a big kid or whatever, you know, like that that fun side because you have to be serious all the time as an attorney. You know what I mean? That's like that's like majorly serious stuff. You had to go to school for a long time, and there's like there's so much to it. And you have to learn the laws of your state and the federal. And there's so much that goes into that. And then you get to have this outlet where you get to be goofy and write this awesome stuff that I know kids would love, would definitely love those books. It sounds like something I would read to my grandson. It's, it's fun. You could, you could, it, it's so much fun uh, in terms of different characters, the voices, and the illustration, uh, I have an amazing illustrator, Andy Case, uh, who's in Nottingham, England. Oh, wow. I'm in, uh, in Hoboken, New Jersey. So, uh, I, so you know, we, we work together over the phone and, and, uh, and on Zoom meetings. And I'll fly out to Nottingham and, and have a couple of pints and wow. talk about stuff. So it's it's so much fun it's it's like the the collaboration there's nothing better than that that's uh uh which is a lot of fun but and i do get to be goofy as a lawyer too just but just so you know oh well that's good yes you know what i mean that you have that you know kind of a life or that kind of an outlet that's really good that's really yeah, good no, it's it's uh it, it keeps me busy it keeps me uh uh keeps things fun and right. then the funny thing is that with every book, I go, okay, I'm done. That's it. Nothing else. else. And uh, and then uh, like some idea pops in my head. I go, oh, I have another one. Like, so next year it will be Escape from Zoodle Traz. Oh, and, wow. I like it. And, and that that's going to, that's, you know, going to be like so, so much fun. Uh, we have... Uh, Swifty Swoodle and the Duwapa Doodles, mm -hmm. and um, they they have this. They go on on a world tour. And they make like a gazillion dollars. I don't know if you know, gazillion dollars is a lot of money. You know, so <laughs> yeah. if, they, 
yeah, it's just pretty good. Right. So, so uh, Kludel the Grand Rudel here on even on the planet of Zoodle hears about this a gazillion dollar tour, and on Zoodle the only music you can listen to is Kludel the Grand Rudel. He has a band called Kludel and the Grand Rudels. So okay. Makes sense. So he decides to go on on a, a go to Earth to have a, a a world tour too and make like more than a gazillion dollars, but he sucks. He, he his music sucks. It's like oh, uh, like they throw tomatoes at him. That just it's, so he wants to get again. He wants to get revenge, and uh, he kidnaps a schmoodle and. Um, Noodle, just like uh, just uh, and brings them to Zoodle Traz, and and then um, nice. we the good guys, our, our our heroes, have to rescue them. So that's, oh, that's me. awesome. That's good. You could have like a like a you know a a very long series out of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, how how long are your books typically? Like uh, how many pages or how many? You know. So the first book, uh, Snoodles, Cadoodles, Poodles, and Lots of Snoodles is about 38. The next two books right. run 64. It's, okay. uh, yeah. it's a little bit longer. And I'm guessing the fourth book is going to be also around uh, that that length. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the big challenge with all these books is I want to make it like a, like good enough or clear enough that it's a standalone book. So mm -hmm. you could buy episode two read it and you kind of know what's going on because i i, mm. I uh in that book i i have like a movie theater uh thing previously on snoodles in space and it goes back yeah. and retells the story uh and even in the second book uh my next book i have a parade and the city uh the the mayor goes to like gives a speech that the state of the city sort of speech and there's a parade and and he talks about the heroes of Noodleham. So again, <laughs> trying to uh, uh, refresh the story and bring people up to speed so they're not complete, like to not be lost on mm -hmm. it. That, that's the challenge if you write like these books. It's like, okay, like uh, how do I keep on telling this, going back and, and then starting new? And th that takes some pages still, so. Yeah, so, I mean, I can tell backstories. So, yeah, yeah. There's like whole backstories and you know the character development and you know. Yeah, yeah no, that that's uh, the amazing thing. I I flew out to Nottingham uh, earlier this year, and uh, my illustrator Andy he uh, he he has he has this mind like J.K. Rowling, and he tells me like J.K. Rowling when she wrote all those Harry Potter books. Mm. Uh, she was drawing up all the backstories of all the characters. Like mm -hmm. there's like there's things you never see with the the characters or the story itself, but there's all these backstories. And when mm -hmm. he's drawing all these characters, he's cre he's also creating these backstories. Mm -hmm. So he keeps bothering me. Oh, Steve, you have to write more about R. Artie McDoodle. He has like there's all this stuff going on with like I have no idea like he he already created these backstories for uh, all these different characters so that's uh, awesome which uh, you know I listened to and uh, okay I I could do that and uh, the the other amazing thing the next book which uh, I, I'm so excited about was it was inspired my my illustrator actually happens to be a musician and an amazing mm -hmm. singer. And he came out last November. He came out with this album uh, called Leap of Faith. Andy Case, Leap of Faith. It's on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm listening to the album. There's not a single bad song on that album. Oh, uh, cool. But um, so there's this one song, uh, Lost Souls in the Dark. And I hear this guitar. And I hear like, like, like spaceships flying through the sky. And, uh, and then. Um, there's another song called "Break Break Free," mm -hmm. and and again it, it's it has this guitar sound like where the uh, spaceship is landing on the planet, oh. and like it's "Break Free." That's the chorus, and and um, all of a sudden the story appeared in my head. So uh, every book I have uh, new poodle, 
uh, so and a new and a museum. So the the first book uh, there's an art museum. The second book is a space exploration museum. The uh, third book there's an uh, aquarium and water park. And oh, wow. in this book now there's this music theme. So uh, Zoodle Trask becomes like some port at the end of the story. It's uh, becomes this big music venue in the galaxy. Mm. Zoodle Trask was had been a very scary place where uh, uh, the Zoodles put their, the people or the, the pets, they don't allow, allow pets on Zoodle, so that's mm. a problem. So they all go to uh, Zoodle Trap. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what year did the, uh, this whole, I guess this whole journey start? Uh, the whole it, again, again I, yeah, I, I wasn't planning on this. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, it was, I think it was like 19, no, 20, 2018. And um, I, I was in Rome with my wife, and uh, we had an Airbnb, and, and she was like coloring her hair, and the dye got in her eye, mm. and, um, and, and she got cranky. And, and, and then I said, you're like a Tyrantocrank. My first book is The Last Surviving Dinosaur, the Tyrantocrank Thoris. Thoris is the Yiddish word for problems. Okay. Uh, so so uh, I called her Tyrantocrank It just came out of my mouth. Uh, and I said, that's how probably all the dinosaurs died. There's this one little dinosaur kept cranking out its Thoris, so all the other dinosaurs <laughs> dropped dead. And she laughed. And, and then... Um, about five months later, I had the story of the dinosaur, how all human beings evolved from this cranky dinosaur, which is why when we're born, you know, babies start crying when they come out because they right. really evolved from this little dinosaur. So, uh, so after that, uh, some reviewers said, well, you didn't talk enough about overcoming crankiness. And I said, it's all about embracing our crankiness. I started <laughs> writing a blog on crankiness and I have an, Two adult books. The first one is a grown-up guide to effective crankiness, the Cranky Saurus method. And then last year, I came out with Cranky Superpowers: Life Lessons Learned from the Common Cranky Saurus Chronicles. So, so I just kept writing stuff, and then part of that was these kid books, uh, which kind of relate to to crankiness. So the the crowd will be, everyone is cranky. Uh, so that became a, a part of the story. Uh, the uh, like in the 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 second book, uh, Snoodles in Space, where the, the parents say, you know, it's not rocket science. You know, it's not brain surgery. The, the, the thing about it is no one ever says says that. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, it's not like you're doing calculus. You know that calculus is not BC, cal uh, it's not brain surgery. Usually when they say it, it's like you didn't make your bed. Uh. The most simplest thing. You know, it's not brain surgery. Well, if I'm telling you you failed at the most simplest thing, why even bother to get out of bed in the first place? You know, so yeah. so uh, so there is that 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 thing going on, and um, even in in cranky superpowers, I had this willy nilly dilly dally uh, cranky source chapter where it, they we have the characters a willy nilly noodle and dilly dally doodle. Where they, they take these these tests and and they both get a zero on the test and it explains why they get a zero. So I, I incorporated that story into this part where you know in this in this story they their uh, noodle strudel cadoodle noodle got like kind of a uh, uh, poisoned with uh, make make them income poops. Uh, Brianna Brainy Brutal and Ricky Rockadoodle. So. So I incorporated that part into this. So, uh, but it, again, it's, it's this journey where I think I'm done, and then there, there's more stuff uh, that, mm. that comes up. Wow, that's really great. Um, wh uh, where did you come up with the whole concept, though, of like the snoodles and? Uh, um any inspiration that that came from, or well, just... the first book, uh, a lot of this stuff uh, comes from being an attorney, being a busy attorney. Hmm. So, 
So uh, in that, the first book, it was Pierre Letoudel, who he was given the, the job of, of uh, restoring the, this Mona Lisa painting, uh, type painting that was made out of noodles. And um, uh, Sour Krudelman wanted revenge, so he put sauerkraut all over the painting. So he's an art restoration guy. And how he restores painting is by scratching the surface. Mm. And, uh, and no matter what he did, it, he, like, I, he kept saying, I barely scratched the surface. And, and Herbie Snoolman comes to see the progress. You barely scratch the surface. And <laughs> it was like this busy time around COVID where I was like inundated with stuff. And I felt like I barely scratched the surface. And, and, and at the same time, I was writing, uh, I like cooking. So uh, I had cooking class crankosaurus. So that was going on in my head. And I was thinking of like a food chapter. And then the game got into noodles. And then I, I was thinking of snoodles. And then I got poodles. And, and, and um, it kept coming. It, it's amazing how many words I could use with a noodle so uh, and like next book there it's like there's like tons there's tina taka doodle there's uh the the, the grudel cheese a doodle <laughs> Luna doodle you know it's just like it, it keeps going on so that's awesome i love it you have some com some questions samantha <laughs> Um, I had a thought. I can't remember. Um, I was thinking, like, are there for each of your books? Is there like specific elements that, like, you require to be in the book? Like, are, are there certain things that you're like, okay, so I know I want this to be an element? You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, so every book, I want a new poodle. So uh, in the first book, there's Schnoodle. Then the next book, there's Schmoodle. And in the, the third book, there's Droodle the Poodle. The next book, it, because it's music, is Floodle the Poodle, who plays the flute. And I even, starting with the, uh, um, it, uh, well, you know, Droodle, Floodle. Next, and then after that, there's even the fifth book in my head right now, which is uh, Gloodle, very gluey, sticky dog. Uh, so, uh, uh, so there, there's a like a new poodle in every book. There's uh, I, I like to have a new uh, some sort of automobile. So mm -hmm. uh, you know we have the Grudel, the Krautmobile, the Snoodle. In, in the in the next book coming up is the Swoodle, which is a Snoodle but becomes invisible. You could be like oh. be, they had to. Uh, uh, free uh, our, our friends from out of Zoodle Traz. So there's uh, so there's a new new uh, way of transportation. And then um, and then uh, the other thing I like is like a museum. I want to have a museum. I grew up in in the Bronx, in New York City, and mm -hmm. growing up as a kid, uh, we we loved going to museums, even mm -hmm. if we had no clue what like why we were going to museum you know so we're we're talking about like 10 year olds who go to the metropolitan museum of art we kids from the bronx really didn't care about art but we loved going into this grand big building and it, it, you did a voluntary donation so it was like like six of us would give a nickel so it'd be less than the penny each we don't each one but we were in the museum and we saw all these paintings and and uh, it was fun, and the Museum of Natural History, and, and the planetarium, and we, we mm -hmm. loved, loved going to museums as a kid. That, that's like, and um, this, this was growing up in the Bronx, and all of us just had this love of museums. Mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's part of my, my, my thing in these books, uh, that people, you know, it's creating something, uh, teaching people, uh, being create like uh, thinking outside the box, uh, making the world better, and uh, whether it's cleaning the waters, 
cleaning our environment, uh, having this wonderful place, this this wonderful world that uh, the crazy world that all these people live in with crazy characters. And uh, yeah, and the museum, the museums, that's part of it. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. Is that something you've kind of realized like those elements are important along the way or do you, like, did you know that starting out like, oh, these are things that I want to have in it? Uh, well, the, the first book, the, the first book, uh, it, it just turned out that way where uh, the art museum, because a lot of the story focuses on uh, the, the desecration of this painting, and this new art museum. And, uh, and Sarah Krugelman lost his, like his crap mobile business. And he was kind of annoyed by that. Uh, so he wants revenge. So it just turned out uh, I had the museum there. And, uh, and uh, you know, then things take off from, from there. Uh, in the next, next book, uh, Sarah Krugelman gets has some redemption. He, uh, he uh, invents the prickly pepper purple propulsion powered pickle. Prickly pepper purple propulsion powered pickle, uh, which you put one of these pickles in a snoodle and then you could do space travel. You could go ten times faster than the speed of light. It was amazing, you know. Just uh, so, uh, so again, that allows for a museum. Um, that would that was an easy one. And here, where like the waters, the third book, but the waters get clean is okay. We're gonna have an aquarium. Uh, so oh. it just it's just like once I had the first museum. Then uh, it, it became like, okay, I'm going to do museums. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like that part of the book, because I think museums are, are we need museums. You know, it's just when you mm -hmm. like, like, it's like a special trip when you get to go to the museum. And growing up in New York City, like I'll, I'll have friends coming and then you have to do the tour. You take the Statue of Liberty, you take the, this museum, that museum. Uh, mm -hmm. I go to London, you know, oh, let's go to the museum. So I, I think that there are special places. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're kind of fun. Right. Yeah. What's that all right? I had, see, <clears throat> I swear I have ADHD because my brain is like, I'll think something, then I'll forget it like two seconds later. Um. Oh, I, I was going to ask, is there like a specific process that you use in like writing these books? Like, does it just come naturally or are there certain things you do that kind of help with invoking this creativity? Well, uh, two things. For, I, I, I'm a runner. Uh, I, I run uh, a lot of the stuff when I go running. I'll run two hours, like, 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 and it gets created uh, in my, and uh, everything comes from uh, my book, which comes also from just being a lawyer, where I get inspiration. Uh, so, so it goes, they go together. Uh, so, with um, with these all these books, it's, just, it's, it's pretty much like right. Uh, have some ideas that work on. So in stories, stories where uh, I uh, read the story of Cinderella, uh, where she gets the megaphone, doesn't get the game. Uh, but um, the funny thing about that story is that Prince, the, the frog, he uh, he saw Snow like uh, he was a frog. Uh, no, he uh, yeah, a frog uh, because of the Wicked Witch who wanted the ruby red slippers. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, Cinderella's uh, Bruce Prince, uh, was running the uh, uh, 
Ruby Red Clippers next. And then uh, uh, he sees fly, sorry, fly, but so white with the fly or the lift. And he goes, Oh, that's but he hit so white up, he starts and it was broke up because you know that I don't know if you know, but so white flipping that little <laughs> So, yeah. so he had a pro I don't know why, but I didn't like him much. And uh, he would call them dwarves. And because they're not dwarves, they're cute little men. And, um, and then Fox broke up and he had an online chat. Uh, so, so think hooking up with Cinderella, but the fun thing with that, yeah, the, the run, that, that was probably the, one of the most fun ones, because uh, basically, with the king and queen, saying, oh, like, a prince, a frog, so, and, like, I'm hearing my, my parents talking this whole time, you know, <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, so that was fun. Uh, I redo The Wizard of Oz, where, uh, the wit the line gets the wit so uh like really really fun thing where it's like you know, like like stuff like you know you get one good thing and a nothing after that yeah if I have to put it it gets it builds up, builds up and builds up and builds up it's like every run it's more and more and more story and then Weeks later, oh, it's missing something. It's like cooking. So I, I, I need a little of this. Ah, oh, right. Was that mother? Was that cutting it in and out for you as well? I just saw hair, but I, but I, I understood what he was saying. Oh, mine, my on my end, it was a lot. I didn't, I didn't hear most of that. It was going, but I could repeat I hear that there. all over again. I haven't memorized, you know, no. <laughs> I don't know. It must have been on my, more so on my end. I'm not sure. I just wasn't sure if it, that's happening for um, the viewers as well, if it was cutting in and out. Oh, no. I hear you better now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I will like. I was trying to read your lips. You were talking about the Wizard of Oz and the Princess and the Frog. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was I'm cool. Different stories in uh, in, in uh, cranky superpowers. So uh, there's like one that. on Cinderella. There's one on Wizard of Oz. Uh, mm -hmm. I have the three little pigs with Inky, Pinky, and Stinky. And, <laughs> I like it. Uh, and and then you know, Stinky. Uh, they they all went to university and uh, for Inky and Pinky didn't turn out too well and then uh, Stinky uh, was uh, at a lecture uh, where the topic was how to put lipstick on a pig <laughs> and and Stinky was saying what a dumb class like why would I want to put lipstick on it? like why would anybody want to put lipstick on the pig and Stinky started daydreaming and thinking about playing in the mud and then. And he called, oh, I could make a house of bricks. And and that, that really um, uh, turned out well for Stinky. Not only did Stinky get the big bad wolf, who didn't turn out, didn't end up in, who ended up in the pot, but but um, but they ended up naming the town Stinky Town, which was very nice, because everybody was so impressed with uh, Stinky's uh, brick house. Mm. So, But the point about that is, like, the, the value of daydreaming, you know, so that, that was, that was fun. Uh, I did, um, Star Trek. I had an interview, uh, again, it's like, oh, wow, that's a good, like, like, you know, you get the idea in your head and then more ideas come. So Captain Kirk had to interview Mr. Spock for the first officer position. So Captain Kirk goes to Mr. Spock, can you give me your word that you will be loyal and trustworthy and, and, you know, dedicated to the Federation. 
And he goes, no, I can't give you my word. I, I, well, what do you mean you can't give me my, your word? Well, everybody I've interviewed so far has said they would give me their word of you know, being loyal. No, I can't do it. But I will be your, the best first officer you ever had. And he explained on, on the planet Vulcan, you probably didn't know about this, but on the planet Vulcan, they had this great leader who said that we should invade the planet Romulan uh, because the Romulans all look like Vulcans anyway and will be greeted as yeah. liberators. And he says, I give you my word. And every year the war kept going on and on and on. And he kept saying, I give you my word. And the problem, if you think about this, mm-hmm. if, you, if, if we keep giving our words, uh, at some point we have no words left. And so that's what happened on Vulcan. Um, the, the leader... And a lot of people who followed the leader all of a sudden couldn't communicate anymore because they gave all their words away. So uh-huh. the elders of Vulcan said, made it a law that you, you're, you must keep your word. You can't give your word. If you give your word, especially if you're a politician, it's punishable by death. Which is, oh. you know, so. But again, it, it's, it's the lesson of, you know, again, keeping your word is more important than just, just giving it. You know, so. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So, have you thought about doing um, like an animated version of this? Uh, so we we have in the works uh, Cinderella and the Froggy Prince. That's one book uh, that um, we'll we'll be doing at some point if. Uh, every time I like, like I, I have that book out there, and then I have another Snoodles idea, and Snoodles takes precedence. So uh, uh, he was like, I already had him started on Cinderella, and it's like, okay, no, I have another Snoodles book, put it up to the side, and uh, we're back. Or you know that that's that's on the back burner. So yeah, we keep doing the Snoodles thing, uh, and. Um, yeah, that that's fun. And then I have a a, a legal book I'm, I'm putting together, which because I do have my day job as a lawyer, and I teach negotiation. I write about negotiation. So, oh wow. So that that's that's uh, another thing uh, that I have in the in the works. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I have this. Uh, I have a friend who's a trial consultant, and. Uh, coming up with a story where she's in Paris and trying to, uh, uh, this person is wrongfully accused of murder and he, she helps to save that person. Uh, so that, that's a, a completely different kind of story. Uh, but that that's in my head as well. Hmm. No, cause I could, I could completely see, you know, the snoodle series being like, a a cartoon yes. or like an animated type of a project. Yeah. I think kids would really like that. Yeah. And the, in the next book, uh, again, with the, uh, with um, the, the state of the city sort of getting that we tell this, the city of heroes uh, mm-hmm. and then all these, uh, all the, the characters of the previous books are, are these big giant balloons, like, like, something in the Macy's Day Parade. And, uh, and I said, you know, I told my illustrator, Andy, I said, Andy, my, my goal, it's a big goal, but uh, I would love to, like, it like, w- wouldn't be so cool if one day our characters were up in these giant balloons in the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, so we're, we already were creating it in the next book, but th- that, that would be like... Uh, such a fun thing. Uh, if you can imagine uh, something that started in your head that your illustrator is like, you know, he's, he's the greatest person ever and he's just doing these things. And then I could fly him out to, like from Nottingham to New York for Thanksgiving and he could see what he drew in the sky, like big, big, huge thing. And just look, I, 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 fantasize about the smile on his face mm. uh, that of like, wow, like look what we have done. So, so that, that's the dream 
that that's that that it would be a dream. But again, uh, that would have to be, and I and I think it would be a great like cartoon series because mm-hmm. the, the they're quirky characters. They they have funny words. Uh, the the zoodles are ridiculous, uh, and uh, you know what what I, I've said. Like my goal is to make uh, uh, the, the, something c- completely ridiculous, totally believable, and and if if you could fall for that, it becomes believable. The ridiculous becomes believable. I says like it becomes magical, and then anything is possible. That that's mm-hmm. that's how I put everything together. So when I when I write these books, that's that's what I'm going for. Mm. Wow. So when do you find the time to do this, considering what you right. do for a day job? <laughs> yeah. Plan your run. Well, the uh, it, it, I, I'm actually like I'm. It's being older. It helps. So I'm. I'm just turned sixty three last month. So uh, 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 that means my my daughter is twenty nine. So like people say, oh, do you read this to your daughter? Well, she's twenty nine now. So I did give her a book. She's very proud. But but it's not like like when I was she was a little kid. Uh, right. Yeah. If you ask me, like twenty years ago, when when you have a nine year old daughter and you're reading the stories. And uh, you're going to the playground, and you do the play dates, and and you're doing you tap, and then you have your day job, and you're taking care mm-hmm. of all this this other stuff. You know, if you ask me when you have time to do it, I would say I don't. And mm-hmm. uh, and now, uh, like uh, during like uh, I, I wake up early in the mornings, like 5 a.m., and I'm out running uh, by six, so I, I'm out there from six to eight thirty. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, like that's where stuff happens, and then um, uh, it gets written in my head. And if it gets written in my head, I'll write it down afterwards. Uh, so, uh, and then on the weekends, where I just okay, I have a little time, and then it's just like typing away. Wow, that's really cool. Still works. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> But so, have you gone on like any book tours or any kind of like um, been getting a lot of press from this? Uh, I've gotten some press. I've uh, uh, I haven't done like uh, like uh, like uh, again because of the day job. I mm. have uh, last year. Uh, I went to. The, I was invited to the Oscars, uh, mm. the Oscars gifting room, uh, where. Anybody who got gets nominated for an Oscar, they get these like gifts. It's crazy, uh, like thousands and dollars, like I- trips to islands and this trip and perfumes and all kinds of. And they line uh, like, oh, like who is going to show up for this? Like I, I don't know. Like and then like my book, I have like a little table and I'm signing my book and I'm there, I'm taking pictures with celebrities and. Mm. Uh, Amazingly enough, there's a line out. It's in the hotel, and we have this these two rooms where they, they go from room to room and through. But there, it's a line like thirty people waiting to come into this room uh, to get a copy of my book and whatever other chachkas. They were nice chachkas, uh, but. Uh, but my my book was one of the things that was, that was being given away, and I got to be there, and that was, uh, it was work. It was like nonstop. It was just like mm-hmm. from like 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. straight, not not a break. There was not no not a second of downtime. I wow. I, think, uh, I I have a publicist, and said, so, "Oh, do you want to do this?" I said, "All right, sure." You know, I'm flying out to California. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. like, I, I have no idea what this is going to be like. And it was like buzzing, so so I did that, and um, a few readings here and there. The, the one problem is that that uh, being an attorney, I again I have my day job. So uh, and I I was telling somebody the other day I was on the podcast, and I I said like if I was uh, if my daughter was like again ten years old, uh, and I'm writing this book. Uh, she would be like saying, "Oh, my dad wrote this book," and I would be coming into school and reading the book and, and doing all that stuff. But 
my daughter at 29 is like no it's just he's uh, it's beyond that so i don't i don't have that opportunity right well until maybe someday you you know get grandkids and stuff or i don't know yeah. if you have <laughs> yes right because those are uh, they seem like they'd be great books to read to kids Oh yeah, no, it's fun. Like you're saying, get them to say "prickly pepper, purple potion powered pickle" five times. <laughs> right. Or the the frimpy frumpy frugal has a fitzy witsy papa doodle, and and whiny woo has swizzly twizzly. I've done it so many times. I I can easy for me. <laughs> I would get tongue tied and and just lose it. I don't think I could do that. Right. Uh, so this could be the new Junie B. Jones books. Remember, I used to read those all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a lot of fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think this was very interesting, and I love how you you explain the story. It's like you're very good at storytelling. It like very captivating. Mm. Well, thank. Thank you. No, it's 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 fun. It it, um, it being being uh, writing this stuff. Uh, you, you know, when you write it, it's like wow. You just get you're just in the moment with the idea, and then it's like six months later, and and you really want like how did they do that? What who like where did that come from? You know, so like mm. some drugs in my drink. You know, like that. That's. <laughs> Uh, I mean, really, I, I do think that sometimes it's like, how did that, that happen? But uh, it, it really it, it happens. So uh, right. uh, it's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to look back on. And, uh, and like, like you have your favorites. And again, as a runner, sometimes just, you know, you know how you, uh, you hear like some song you really love and you know, like I listen to it so many times, and I'll just like, like, kind of have the music in my head, listening to the music. And I'm not hearing the song; I can still hear it in my head. And uh, I, I could go back to uh, to uh, uh, some stories I wrote, and like, wow, like I came up with that, and I just play in my head. And it's like, and and it's it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling where you just. Uh, uh, like replay your your own greatest hits just uh and and kind of chuckle uh and then you, you do that enough times and all of a sudden you have another thing popping in your head that you didn't even expect hmm. right that's beautiful i'm noticing she pulled up the snoodles in space now everyone could see the cover yes <laughs> I thought people should see the art. You know, I like the yeah. illustrations. You know? uh, Andy Casey, he's, he's incredible. He loves it. Uh, this, uh, he, he's like so, like, like so excited to do this, and we're, we're like two little kids, and just uh, uh, having, like, having that connection. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, when when. Like like a like it's like this bromance sort of thing where we we t tell each other we love each other, uh, like uh, you know it, it, like uh, he, like we we get to see each other and our, like our eyes light up that what we created for each other, uh, it, it's cool. this bond that uh, across the Atlantic Ocean, you know, it's like. Uh, Again, when you don't expect it, it wasn't in the plans, and mm. it's just so. So I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for that. No, oh, that's oh, amazing. That's, that's really awesome. great. Yeah, especially when you get to do something like this, you know, as an outlet, not just as like for a living or anything like that. You're just, you know just your creative outlet yeah no it, it. it's it's definitely it's um uh it, it's it's fun it's um 
it, it helps me even with my, my day job where, you know, just in terms of like being creative with my, my day job, mm. uh, a lot of in my, my uh, Cranky Superpowers books, uh, uh, I, I get inspiration, most of it from my day job uh, mm. over and over again. And that, that leads to something. So, uh, wow. yeah, it's fun. That's amazing. Oh, um, we want to thank you for being on the show today so much. Um, can you please tell everyone where they can find you? Like, where can they buy your book? Where they, can they read stuff? You know, where can they find your social media and your website and all that? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's been great. It's a thrill to be here. And uh, you could find all my stuff at stephenjosephauthor.com. Mm -hmm. uh, what you will find there is um, all my books. You'll find all my books there, where to buy them, where to go. Uh, it'll take you where you need to to make the make a purchase. Uh, it also has this award-winning blog that uh, I write on crankiness. Uh, mm -hmm. There's actually two blogs. I just started. Uh, actually, it's not started because there's 16 posts, long posts because it's going to be part of my book, but. Uh, a lawyer blog, the defense can now rest. Mm. Uh, it gives like a there's a F. Lee Bailey wrote the book, The Defense Never Rests. I've mm. I'm gonna be writing a book, The Defense Can Now Rest. So that's like a blog there. But but the entertainment is on the on the crankiness stuff. That that's where you're gonna have a lot of fun. And uh, you have uh it really incorporates every, every all, all my books. All my books are you could uh, kind of find bits and pieces in that blog. Wow, I I love it. We we've had such a great time talking to you today, and thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate you and what you're putting out into the world. And I know kids would love to read this, and and you know not just kids, but everyone, but. Thank you for sharing your creativity with us. We really appreciate it. Well, yes. thank you for having me. It's been great. And thank now i got to read all of the books. I know, right? <laughs> now we're going to go have to go check those out. <laughs> yes. We're read all, read all, all of them. them. <laughs> yeah, read a thon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank you to Desiree Duffy uh, for bringing you over to us uh, from Black Chateau publishing as well as um shirley oranon oranan i think i have to say right oranan a public relations black chateau uh so appreciate all of you and your team for um you know being on here today and for letting us into your world for a moment so okay. everybody make sure you like share subscribe and follow Go download his books, purchase the books, you know, go read them, be a supporter, you know, tell your friends, tell your friends, kids, you know, everybody to go out and check it out. Yes. Thank you. So, heck yeah, this has been uh, author Stephen Joseph here on Fear and Fascination, Horror, Sci-Fi, and Fantasy Unleashed. And we've today been obviously talking more about the uh, sci-fi elements of things so thank you again and go check it out snoodles in space or just in general the snoodle series of books so thank you to everybody for watching today we appreciate all of you thank you to my wonderful co-host samantha bailey and also for the sultry songstress amy bowman and shyler staver the mac daddy of metal will be back with us next week on another exciting broadcast until then have a good night. Stay safe and go read a book. <laughs> or many. All of the or snoodles. Many. All or the many snoodles. books. Snoodles, snoodles, and more yes. snoodles. Snoodles, snoodles, snoodles. <laughs> right. Say five times fast. All right. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>